morning for America and Latin. Good afternoon for Europe. For me, it's a great pleasure to be here with distinguished ad audits and with distinguished colleagues. We are uh, investigated for more than two years about that topics. Um, well, thanks a lot to Seoul University, Iñaki and Alvaro for the possibility. Uh, today, we are in an historic moment regarding the digital transformation of the tax administration. The main topic of my investigation is about the digital transformation of tax administration and new taxpayer rights in America and Latin. We know that many countries are planning tax reforms and modernization process. Um, uh, tax administration, like, like we said before in the excellent presentation of my distinguished college, are incorporating technology. But the, the main purpose of my, my research is to know is uh, about, about digital transformation respecting taxpayer rights. That is the main investigation. Let's move on to the main topics. Uh, I will focus on five topics in this research. The first is about digital transformation of tax administration. The second about artificial intelligence. The third about blockchain. The fourth about taxpayer rights. And the final ideas and recommendations. Well, uh, we know there are a lot of advantages of digital transformation of tax administration. For instance, working with digital files, allowing teleworking or, or phone office, providing service in new formats, implementing compliant risk management, offering pre-file tax returns, promoting collaboration and integration among different entities and tax administration, and uh, also improving the quality of information. Let's move on an important topic for uh, Latin and, and America, uh, that is electronic invoicing. Electronic invoicing is a Latin American innovation of the process of tax transparency. But the important thing is that uh, today electronic invoicing uh, is using for other purpose. For example, for control uh, goods, for a single accounting system, for electronic payroll, and also for factoring and financing measuring. But uh, uh, tax administration are, movers, uh, are moving uh, towards uh, online real controls. In this uh, graphic, you can see that uh, Chile was the first country to implement uh, electronic invoice in 2003. But nowadays, there are 14 countries in Latin America who are using electronic invoice. The, the last uh, was a Dominican Republic from uh, the last year. Let's move on to the topic of artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence, there are a lot of use of artificial intelligence in America and Latin tax administration, but one of the, the best use is in virtual assistant. These virtual assistants are using to provide information and assistance to taxpayers. I am I believe that in the future, virtual assistant may be integrated with other digital service for the tax administration, for example, for making payments or for verifying tax files. Um, a, another important topic is that virtual assistant could also be integrated with other virtual assistant or for other agencies in the country. For example, Estonia uh, has a, a virtual assistant to explain Estonian countries. In my research, there are uh, a lot of countries who, who are using virtual assistant in the in LATAM. Uh, for example, Brazil with Teresa and recently launched Leon for custom, Peru with Sofia, Guatemala, Canada, Costa Rica, Colombia and Chile. Uh, let's move to another topic uh, about artificial intelligence in auditing. Uh, for instance, in the, Chile evaluates the notes that employees take when they answer taxpayer question to the tax tax fraud. Also, Peru use AI for electronic control of the general sales tax. 
and uh, sends alerts to the taxpayers. Colombia seeks to connect the national ports with uh, this technology. And in Canada, in Canada, there is an important application of uh, artificial intelligence because uh, with, uh, with that, they evaluate whether a person should be classified as an employee or as a business person to pay taxes. In another uh, important use of artificial intelligence is in customs. Brazil uh, has the CSAN, who is a, uh, who is a selection system for custom. Uh, it evaluates import declaration form. Um, uh, other, other, use is, other uses are, for example, computer tomography, that uh, there is an equipment that allows to check the content of the shipments without having to open them. Argentina Custom has been working with data mining also uh, using artificial intelligence. Other, uh, important, uh, another important use, sorry, is the in airport, the facial recognition system. Uh, for instance, in Panama, uh, since 2011, uh, in Canada and in the United States. Also, uh, Chile Custom launched a mobile application to make online purchase. Let's move up to an important topic that I researched, who is the application of artificial intelligence in justice. My, my question is, could, uh, could artificial intelligence help to resolve the dispute with tax administration? Nowadays, uh, there are two countries who are using artificial intelligence in justice. One is Argentina with a system called Prometea, in, uh, and other is Colombia with a similar system called Pretoria. The, that system uh, applies uh, artificial intelligence to automatic, automatically make good rulings. But uh, I completely disagree with the idea that Jews can be replaced by robots. I, I believe that artificial intelligence can be used to support for the ruling that the Jews must take in their resolution. And uh, the two systems that analyze uh, do that, that uh, Argentinian system and, and Colombian system. Other uh, important use uh, is blockchain in America and Latin tax administrations. My, my college, uh, Senia, uh, Senia Cipec and Alma Virto explain a lot about this topic. Um, also in the, in, in the Latin region, there are lots of applications. Uh, one of the applications is uh, in, in Brazil, uh, who shares data from the registry of taxpayers amongst uh, the regulatory institution, because Brazil is a federal country. Uh, we, uh, it, it has two levels, federal, state, and municipal. Argentina has implemented a, a single tax uh, registry similar like the, uh, the Brazil system. But uh, one of the best applications of blockchain in the region is in Mercosur Customs. Mercosur Customs are connected by BConnect, who is a, a BConnect is a blockchain network that uh, allows to share information. It started by allowing the exchange of information from authorized economic operators. I believe that in the future, blockchain have, uh, have a lot of potential for exchange of information domestically and internationally. Um, another, uh, another potential use is uh, in pre-file tax returns, where the tax administration could use a database with blockchain to supply taxpayer with such information. Now uh, we are advancing in the presentation and we enter in the, in the main topic, who is the taxpayer rights. In, in America and Latin, there are charters or statutes of the taxpayer rights, but uh, they, they also include the duties of the taxpayer because there, there is a balance between obligation and rights. Uh, one in, important document is the uh, Inter-American Center of Tax Administration, the Tax uh, Procedure Code Model. Uh, that uh, code model 
considered the figure of the ombudsman of the taxpayer. The ombudsman of the taxpayer is uh, now nowadays is presented in many countries uh, that I, I reserve, for example, in Mexico, Colombia and Peru. There are the most developed countries with, with this figure and also Argentina, Ecuador and Chile. Well, uh, then I, I uh, research in uh, the countries where the taxpayer rights are uh, legislated. In Argentina, uh, the, nowadays, the, the taxpayer rights can only be found in the national constitution, but there are several attempts to pass a statute for taxpayer rights. Brazil, uh, the, the, there are similar situations because there are under analysis a uh, uh, code of taxpayer rights. But nowadays, the rights of Brazilian taxpayers are dispersed in the various tax law and regulations. Canada introduced the Taxpayer Bill of Rights in 2007. Um, they include values of professionalism, integrity, respect, collaboration, and uh, many standards for how taxpayers should be treated when interacting with the tax administration. In, in Chile, the taxpayer rights uh, are uh, legislated in the Article A of the Chilean Tax Code. Um, in all dependencies of the tax authority, the poster must be displayed with the taxpayer rights. In, in Mexico, the taxpayer rights are on the Federal Tax Code and other guidelines. Um, an important institution in Mexico is the PRODECOM, is similar like an, an ombudsman with the, tax, uh, the taxpayer defense uh, attorney uh, has been present since 2006. And also in, in Peru, the taxpayer rights are on the tax code article 92. Well, uh, another country that I investigated is uh, the United States. The United States, the taxpayer bill of right is a cornerstone document that highlights the 10 fundamental rights of the taxpayers. The, I want to mention the right to challenge the IRS position and be here. Apart from this, to appeal the IRS decision and in, the, in an independent forums, the, the rights to privacy and to confidentiality. Uh, my, my final ideas and recommendation to begin with, digital transformation is producing vertiginous changes on the structures and the main function of the tax administrations. Also, tax administrations are using artificial intelligence and blockchain in many functions, like we see in, in my presentation and, and the presentation of my uh, college uh, before. Uh, af sorry, after me, uh, before me. Uh, in America, electronic invoicing is an important innovation. Uh, another uh, important idea that uh, I think that uh, artificial intelligence uh, must be respect some uh, principle of ethics, sanitive principles. For example, privacy, accountability, security, transparency, and explicability. I think it's, it's, it's very important explicability and also justice, non-discrimination, human control and supervision of technology. I, I believe that the ICT solution, the, the new technology that implement that the tax administration uh, are compatible with the accounting and computer system using back taxpayer. We, we, we should reduce the, the tax burden uh, and it's, important, it's, it's very important that they are compatible. I think that uh, I believe, I strongly believe that ICT are only a tools to obtain better results, but the technology is uh, not an objective in, uh, in, in itself. Technology is only a tool um, for because of that, it is vital on the one hand to promote the technology for its efficiency, but on the other hand, to be attentive of uh, 
for uh, this uh, governance. Uh, there are a key role here of courts and jurisprudence. There are key roles in the future of uh, uh, how tax administration are using this new technology. In America and, and Latin, the taxpayer rights are normed in various regulations, like we see in the tax code, in taxpayer statutes, and in guidelines. Some uh, countries like Argentina and Brazil have projects to introduce a specific law. But I think one of the, ma the most important conclusion of my investigation is that from, the, from my survey uh, carried out, it has not been detected that countries have modified the taxpayer rights as a result of the incorporation of modern technology. Now, nowadays, tax administration are incorporating technology, but the law are uh, with, the, with the similar law that uh, they have. Uh, despite the incorporation of ICT uh, technology, no countries have modified the uh, tax law. Okay. Another important idea uh, is that tax administration are responsible for the processing, processing of citizen data. And taxpayers need to know that their information is safe. Uh, because of that, I think that we need comprehensive law are, are, that are uh, required to protect the security and confidentiality of this information. Uh, it's, vital, it's vital more collaboration and more cooperation between tax administration, between taxpayers, between professionals in this field. The new uh, tax law of each country will be consistent with national and international law because uh, nowadays uh, tax Taxation is global. It's a global phenomenon. For example, with, with pile, uh, pillar one and pillar two from OECD, uh, it's, it's vital uh, to reduce compliance costs. I think that technology uh, should reduce taxation. I, I, I think that uh, technology should reduce uh, tax uh, more than we have today. Um, and the taxpayer rights should be adapted to the, this digital disruption. I, I believe that when the new technology, uh, with new technology, uh, should help efficiency and effectiveness to fight against tax fraud, to provide better services to system, to reduce compliance costs and to promote transparency. Transparency is, is, is uh, enough. Uh, we need transparency in, in a lot of regions. Um, uh, all of this, uh, in all of this, uh, we always need to respect in the taxpayer rights because uh, there, there will be a balance between the rights and the use of technology that tax administration are using. Well, uh, thanks a lot for your attention. Uh, um, I, will, I will be happy to answer, uh, answer the questions.